historically managing cameras on Linux without additional kernel modules has been bad. And when I say historically, I'm not just talking about 15, 20 years ago. I mean last week. Have you ever tried to have a webcam, whether it's a C920 or some fancy camera that's plugged in that thinks it's a webcam, and then have that camera in two applications at the exact same time? Only two, not that complex. Let's say a Discord video call, and then you're capturing that call in OBS, for example. So you want to have your camera being captured separate from Discord itself. You can't do this. Discord is a very aggressive application and will try to forcibly take control of your camera, but with something less aggressive, the second application to grab the camera is not going to be able to do so and will just see a black screen. Now, when I'm talking about cameras and webcams, I'm not necessarily just talking about cameras and webcams because a lot of video streams that are intended to be shared between applications pretend to be a camera because applications that handle video know how to handle cameras. So why would you make them handle some additional code when you can just pretend like you're a virtual camera and they already know how to deal with that? For example, VTuber applications where you want to share your model from the application itself into something like a Discord call, OBS, and things like that. Now, there is a way we can deal with this limitation of cameras and make it so you can actually send them to multiple things at once. What a crazy concept. That is called V4L2 loopback. V4L2 is video for Linux 2. This is the video subsystem we use. Loopback means you can loop it back into other things. The problem is it's not just plug in the camera and all of a sudden it can just go to as many things you want. It requires a lot of command line options and configuring the camera to be connected to the virtual device and then connecting to the virtual device instead of the actual camera. And then some applications don't exactly like the virtual device and the module's a little bit flaky. And if you update the kernel but the module doesn't get updated, then it doesn't work. And if you update the kernel without rebooting your system, the module's not going to be loaded. So you need to reboot your system. And it's just a giant mess. And it would be nice if there was a better way. Turns out, there's a better way. This is thanks to a little niche project, you probably haven't heard of it, called Pipewire. Now, Pipewire did originally have a different name. Even though it wasn't directly related to the project, it was going to be called Pulse Video. And now we are starting to see why. So back when I had George Stavrakis on the podcast, he talked a lot about Pipewire and the future of video on Linux. And it's more than just being able to capture your screen. And it's more than just this meta audio system management where you can manage Pulse Audio, you can manage Pipewire and Jack and all of these other things just under Pipewire. So back in October, George Stavrakis made this merge request on OBS, Camera Portal featuring Pipewire. At the time, this was very much experimental. It was not ready for prime time, and it was more about getting feedback on the patch set before going ahead and finishing it and then getting it merged into the project. But this was not the first merge request in regards to this. It actually started with two earlier ones. The first one being Dimidium to Tyus in preparation for Pipewire Camera and Audio Part 1. This was done on January 26th. This was all about cleaning up the code base and actually making it ready for handling Pipewire audio directly, rather than what we are currently doing, which is handling Pulse audio, which happens to just be managed by Pipewire. This would go directly through the Pipewire API. The next one is preparations for portals plus Pipewire camera part two. Once again, this is preparing a lot of the code base and just making sure that things are ready, cleaning things up, adding some basic functionality to it, but not the core feature set that we're seeing in this merge request, along with this one where some of the functionality was split out. Preparations for the camera portal part three. The camera portal plus pipewire combo is the future of cameras on the Linux desktop. But sadly, the lack of real consumers of these APIs is blocking more progress. This gets us closer to this future. And as such, this has now been merged into the project. And in an upcoming release, 
This is going to be available in OBS for everybody on Linux to use. Obviously, you need to have Pipewire installed, but it is going to be there. There are two main reasons I think this is awesome. Firstly, I know a lot of people don't like this direction we're going and are going to fight against it tooth and nail. I don't really know why, because it's probably for the best. This is another step towards the eventual permission system of the Linux desktop. Portals offer a form of access control, and if the way that you are accessing a camera is through a portal, only with explicit permission can the application actually view your camera. This, I feel, is a good thing. Yes, it does add a slight level of inconvenience into using the application, but that is an interface design problem and not a fundamental core design issue. Think about Android, think about iOS, you don't think about these being super inconvenient systems to use when it comes to accessing your camera. The reason why it might be on Linux is there's just frankly not that many UX and UI designers, so nobody really knows about a good way to handle this. Secondly, and a lot more importantly, we have this thing. Now you might be asking, Brody, what is this? This is an application called QPW Graph, a pipewire patch bay. Another popular one is Helvum. Some people also like to use things like QJAC CTL as well. Now, basically what it is, is an application where I can take the audio from, this is my mixer board here, this is what's connected to my microphone, and then redirect this over to a whole nother thing. If I want to send this over to something like my OBS desktop audio capture, I could just be like, okay, okay. and, and now, now you're probably hearing it two of my mic. mic. Let's remove that. This lets me do some really cool things. For example, I have a capture card here which I usually use for my PS5, and I could listen to the audio directly from the capture card or listen to the audio coming out of OBS. Or I could redirect the audio from the capture card to the speakers on my system and also have it connected to OBS. So I'm capturing it and listening to it completely separately. Now that's all of the green nodes. The red nodes and the purple nodes, those are MIDI things. I personally never use these. The blue nodes, this is what we are talking about today because the blue nodes are the video nodes. This is the great thing about having an audio system that is also a video system. It handles both video and audio in this same node-based fashion. So, if you have multiple captures that are all doing Pipewire-based video, you can then redirect that video into other locations. And if I want to go and say, capture my webcam in OBS, and then I also want to send it over to Discord, assuming they supported the Pipewire API, I could do that and then send it to another thing and another thing. And then if for some reason I wanted to send multiple inputs to the same thing, but then hide the input on the node graph, that's also something that I could do as well. Now, for doing all this node stuff, the portal is kind of unnecessary. You could just do that with Pipewire Video directly, like is being done with all of the audio stuff here. But if we're going to integrate Pipewire Video, we might as well go all the way and introduce the permission system as well. Because right now, whilst we are using Pipewire Video for one thing, that being screen capture and window captures, that's basically the only thing. There is currently not an implemented use case that one can actually go and deal with it outside of just doing this. For example, if I go and press delete here, now my video capture is frozen. If I then bring this back, everything comes back. That isn't very useful as it stands because there's just not that many consumers and producers of the video. This would add that. Now, the fun thing about this whole portal is it's not like the camera portal and pipe wire video is this new concept that nobody ever thought about doing before because the portal has been around for a while. The camera portal was added May 22nd 2019. The responsibility of the camera portal is to query the Access API whether the application should be allowed to open camera devices or not. For applications allowed, it can open a Pipewire remote with permissions initially set to denied, with Pipewire itself querying the permission store for up-to-date camera permissions. And if any project is going to change the way we do video capture on Linux, 
I think OBS might end up being that project. OBS is a giant application. And other applications that want to do video capture, that want to do things like voice calls, are going to try to interact in a way that make themselves work with OBS or replicate the behavior that OBS has already made this popular thing. Because if they wait a year, two years, and people are used to this being a thing, it's going to be an expected feature that's there. And I really hope that at some point, Discord, possibly, introduces the Pipewire API alongside many other things that Discord needs to do, but that would be nice to see. But this is not the final step of Pipewire video on Linux. There is a really cool discussion over on the XDG portal repo, app-to-app -app media sharing. This is all about generic, permission-controlled, application-to-application media sharing that can be both video and also audio. So case number one, applications like Inochi 2D Session. This is a uh, FOSS VTuber tool want to be able to share a stream, maybe even various, to other applications, e.g. OBS Studio, I like to watch Sprout 2, and Siphon allows to do on Windows and Mac OS with almost zero latency. So mostly Pipewire plus DMA buff for Linux. We can also point out Gamescope that is a Wayland compositor that want to enable sharing in nested scenarios where an XDG implementation is not a solution. So in this case, Joshua Ashton wanted to add game scope capture directly into OBS. So they were not exactly a big fan of this because OBS doesn't like to have compositor specific implementations of things. They like to do generic solutions like pipe wire video capture and things like that. And having game scope capture just would feel kind of out of place for them. I think it would be a nice feature, but if you could just get a Pipewire video stream directly from Gamescope, that, I think, would deal with the solution. Case number two. Other applications want to be able to provide a virtual camera, e.g. OBS Studio, to be used as a camera in other applications. Some of them already do this with VFRL2 loopback, which require kernel space API to be used. So in OBS, you can actually have OBS pretend like it's a webcam and then share that in something like Discord, for example, or anything else that accepts a webcam as an input. As an example, OBS plans to move features to Pipewire, but the actual proposed implementation requires access to the host Pipewire. So this is an older discussion about general Pipewire support. So for things like virtual cameras, webcam device capture, audio capture, things of this nature. Uh, this one. Case number three, also some applications might want to act as a virtual microphone, device to send their own audio stream, a like to one of EasyFX features, but without requiring direct access to the host Pipewire. EasyFX used to be known as PulseFX back before they relied on Pipewire. So you can capture EasyFX just fine in OBS, but it's doing so through the Pulse Audio API instead of the Pipewire API, which is what EasyFX is doing, so it removes this extra layer of complexity if you can just capture it directly. Now, I know there's been some criticism over the individual pieces coming together. Certain users not being a fan of, oh, we need Pipewire and portals to capture video on Wayland. Why don't we have an API directly like we did in X11? And that's totally understandable when it's just a single thing that needs it. But that is just a single thing that is a piece to a much larger puzzle. Pipewire is going to revolutionize the way that we handle video on Linux. It's just right now, the implementations are not in place. But with OBS having its implementation there, we are finally making progress towards a Pipewire video world. And when all of this is said and done, the way that we handle video on Linux is just going to be better. And this is going to bring us in line with what operating systems like Windows and Mac OS provide. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean, they do it better. So why aren't we doing it better? Why are we just sitting here and letting our video system be worse? There is no reason to do that when there is a solution here that is perfectly good at solving the problem. And that's where we're going now. Right now, it's all very scattered and there's few implementations, 
but long term, this is for the best. And for me, is going to massively improve the way I handle video on Linux. And I, for one, am very excited. But let me know your thoughts down below. If you've not seen it yet, go watch my podcast with George Starakis. It came out a little while ago, but it is still a very good watch. So let me know your thoughts down below. And if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon scrubs. The Bear Pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And you will use Pipewire and you will like it.